I'm going. Yeah, I w I'm going to say, I am a little bit surprised as well, though. You would expect Cypher to be kind of the fan favorite for this yep. one, just because of his previous results in comparison to Osha's. But Osha is on XL, very large organization and a very kind of self-supportive organization. Everybody yeah. kind of votes for each other. Everyone's cheering for each other. I know they've got a big Skype group. Where, where Cypher's on the tiny FA to Karma. I, have, I really don't have that much knowledge of Fate to Karma. They have like a million streamers. Okay. <laughs> well, I rescind my previous statement. That's one each. Right, let's see who can punch the other one during the <laughs> middle of this match. Here we go. Osha now. Back in his living room with his lovely crockery behind him. He kind of swaps between there and Meltdown. Those are the two locations that we get to see. They sound Osha. like my two states. Okay, so we've got to have an incredibly aggressive looking start here from Osha. Um, it's probably not even an aggressive deck. That Bron means there could well be Jade stuff floating around. Uh, he just happens to have a ridiculous start. Yeah, um, and this is a, a dream start, really, especially with a coin. Do you... I would personally go with the double tunnel trog. Go with list. the coin, then you can get the double overcharge as well with mm -hmm. the totem golem. And deck lists are not open. You can make your opponent make a mistake here if you go for that as well. Uh, that's an important aspect of this start. But traditionally, you would coin out the totem golem into the trog because having the 3-4 early is really, really important. But I think... Double Trog may change that, especially when you can curve Golem, buff them both, and then you could well have, I don't know, all sorts of stuff going on in the next turn too. Actually, you can't have all sorts of stuff going on, that's the problem. Um, on turn three, if you're overloaded, things get pretty messy. But I think it's worth it, and he's going to agree with that. Yeah, he's going to go for that play. Interesting to see Sylvanas in this deck for Cypher. The, I feel like that really shows that he's an old-school player, because Sylvanas is a card that has been seen less and less in Reno decks as of late. Or We've certainly been seeing less of it than wh what we used to. It used to be a, a must-have in all Reno log decks. Now, I feel like it's kind of falling out, but Cypher definitely still comfortable to go with that one. Cypher's check there in the background. Yeah. Just a reminder to those harsh commentators. Yeah. Hey, guys. How much have you guys won playing Hearthstone? I've won 50 quid. Job done. Nice. That epic one. Nice. Good times. I won about 300. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's better than me. Hey, I'm the oldest man ever to cash in esports in the whole world. Is that true? That is actually true. Is that true? A certain website about esport earnings. A site that you know they they take earnings of esports and <laughs> put them into I see, I the see. website title and do things by age. Yeah, I am the oldest person <laughs> there. That's I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's a thing that I have. Hey, it's an accolade. That's Meanwhile, the in the real world of actual Hearthstone players who are good, according to a great many salty players, because Cipher has drawn his Reno Jackson, he has won the game. I mean, there's lots of words that comes. You have drawn your hero, your hero Jackson, your Reno Jackson. Therefore, you are a something. But mostly, you have won <laughs> the game necessarily. But yeah, he's, he he will be in a good spot here. Uh, but because of the Twilight Drake, as much as the Reno Jackson, that should yeah. buy him a bit of time. I am, of course, exaggerating slightly. I'm not no, under I, the impression that Reno single-handedly wins the matchup. But the Twilight Drake, as you rightly say, definitely going to be a huge factor in this one. Osha already hovering his hex there, ready for this turn. It's yeah. going to drop the Twilight Drake, that 4-8, just so difficult to deal with, unless there's a hex in hand. Cypher probably won't expect this. Even though he'll know those cards are in mid-range Shaman, when the Shaman does this at the start, you tend to assume they're the aggressive Shaman, even though there's no reason why it should be in a way. Um, but the aggressive cards they've drawn are exactly the ones that are in the mid-range deck. So you tend to assume it's the, the aggressive Shaman. And he'll he'll have an idea that it's coming. He's not you know he's not clueless or something. He knows this is an option, but he'll be very very disappointed when this occurs. If it does occur, Osha definitely not con committing to that just yet. Is actually going to go with that line of play. The only other options really were like dropping Mana Tide or you know ran with nothing else. But realistically, not fun situations because of the trades that would have been available with that Twilight Drake. So it does decide to hex that one in the end and continue to slam damage to face 16 health remaining on turn 5 here. Obviously, Reno available for turn 6 should he get too low. But there's definitely some options now. Refreshment so Vendor wouldn't be too bad just to get something on the board, get a little bit of healing uh, as well. And he knows that Bloodlust is not lethal. It's only 15, so he doesn't have to heal. 
Bloodlust being the most damage that in the real world can be done to him in one turn here. So he can now spend his turn getting the best looking board he thinks for next turn, which may still mean that he just plays the Refreshment Vendor anyway. But he's going to play the Kazakus and save the Refreshment Vendor for after he renos, then gets hit again to make sure that 4 health isn't wasted later on. There is a way that this bites him in the bottom. If there was a Jade Lightning as well as two Lightning Bolts, that would be 11 burst damage from hand. That would be the end of the game. Obviously, we can see but that would that that's cost not. six. Uh, yeah, you're right. I can't count. So, it, okay, so sure. again, anyway, yeah, he's moving fine. swiftly <laughs> on. <laughs> that's two yeah. one to me. Awkward silence. <laughs> as I, I uh, knew I'd get him going. Revel in my my stupidity. Sapcasters, everyone, please. Uh, but yeah, Mana Tide Totem available right now. Kazakus has been played, so I didn't quite catch what the potion I was because I was too busy you being idiot. really bad at maths. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was too busy being really bad at casting, so I didn't pay any attention. Um, okay, so Osha now realising that he's probably going to have to make another push because that Kazakus plays either desperation or completely comfortable. So making sure that he doesn't fall into the trap there. He knows that there's a good chance a potion clears up his board anyway. So don't leave your opponent with a board. And just going to now start playing that value game, having exerted so much pressure that Cypher can't use his cards efficiently because Cypher's going to have to panic play some stuff. Yeah, and now you've already put Cypher into this position where he has to consider dropping things like Reno because, you know, Bloodless exists that would not quite be lethal but with other combinations of cards and such like now in the next turn there actually is the potential of double lightning bolt jade lightning yeah there are many options available that could have been lethal damage so the reno comes down in the end and that's a very big cooldown but very early on however cypher definitely has a lot of his late game tools available to him. Right, and Osha also here has to play around, uh, to some extent, he has to start thinking about turn eight, which is when just major league accidents start happening if you overcommit. So, going to have to play around Nether while is putting enough stuff on the board to make sure that this early pressure isn't wasted because if you can keep your opponent to, on the back foot to some degree, you can still make his cards have to play less efficiently because he has to play them in an order he doesn't want to. But there's no really easy way for Osha to progress here. Everything's kind of awkward. Mm. You don't really want to play the second mana tide. You've already got one on the board, so feels like an overcommitment. And if it doesn't go down, you actually end up outdrawing yourself. You can't play the cards fast enough. I wonder if you'll hero power. That's usually the cop out. Not really quite sure how to develop my board option. <laughs> the most every shuttle way. Yeah, there we go. Could even drop Flame Tongue here just to push a little bit of damage. Maelstrom, fair enough. Is and gonna go for the trade as well onto Reno. Quite a big chunk of damage coming through here. Didn't. Okay, so not wanting to. Wait, did he misclick? Possibly. Cypher said thank you. Osha said the elements will destroy. So either it's a response to the. Hmm. I feel like there was something bad happened there. I feel like that mana totem wasn't meant to go face. Yeah. And he misclicked while he was roping out that if that's the case that sucks it feels like it must be because why on earth would you trade other things in if you're not going to finish off the minion on the other side of it he looks incredibly calm about it all so either he's got nerves of steel or it wasn't a misclick but i think it was a misclick let's go with that for now Although I'm just trying to figure out why the taunt would have come down otherwise. Bran, along with the Jade Spirit available, should he want to just start ramping up the Jades as quickly as possible. Mana Tide, also an option right now. And this is where Devolve doesn't do much. Against Battle Cry minions, it's great against Death Rattle minions, it's great against Utility minions, but against a guy that's already done its work, making it a little bit less staty. And also, when the mana cost is higher than the actual stat value, Right. You can actually sometimes end up upgrading the minions. And <laughs> just casually give them a 7-8 taunt or something. Yeah. Like, oh no, what have I done to myself? 
Okay, Osher's for the second turn in a row having trouble. It may be that he just has to now go, okay, if you've got yeah. Nether, I lose. I'm just going to spam the board. That's what he's going to do. I agree with this just because we're seven turns in and he's not had a single Jade yet. He's got to accelerate that. Got to get some pressure because the reason that any Jade deck can do well against Reno mm -hmm. is because you can spam these massive minions turn after turn. Right. That doesn't happen unless you get these small Jades out of the way. Yeah, and he's got a bit of refuel. He has got the Mana Tide. He's going to be able to devolve if things do get out of hand and at some point he'll be able to devolve into lightning storm or devolve into uh, portal lightning storm like mana intensive board clear turn which is one of the reasons that devolve is contentious depending what you're going to ban what you're going to play but for now he just has to try and keep some pressure coming he has sneakily got cypher back down to 20 game already it's not exactly groundbreaking though and cypher's in a good spot here i think Oddly enough. <laughs> yeah, despite having used that Reno early, still has a lot of resources available to him. I'd love to see what that Kazakus potion is actually going to be doing in this game. Missed it when it was actually picked up in the first place. But just going to be going with a pretty simple turn. He's going to be able to trade everything away, deal with the board alongside the Hellfire. He's going to be summon a 5-5, deal 5 damage. Pretty standard potion, really. Summon a 5-5, five, five. deal 5 damage. Kind of swingy, especially in a situation where Osha hasn't been able to make this wide board. So, even though at the time it might not be ideal, it does. it is actually going to play out well for him. And Osha's going to just struggle. His win condition is make stuff that can't be removed. And he's just really struggling to do that with his tiny golems. Yep, struggling to find any kind of presence on this board, and that's not a fun situation when you're against a Reno lock because you've got to be layering that pressure in, and really, so far, not able to do that. The Mana Tide Totem may well come down here just so we can try and find some more things to drop later. Yeah, we might even see him play the Blood Maze just as a desperation cycle here. As much as you want it for the spell damage, much as you don't want to waste it, he hasn't got anything to do. Yep. And that's just not going to get any better. So I think I prefer that to the Mana Tide because on turn 10, you might be able to hide that behind your Jade Chieftain, but Mana Tide is slightly more mana efficient right now. Interesting to see which one he goes with. I don't think he can go with neither. He's got to do one or the other. Yeah, got to search for that card draw at this point. I, I think I prefer the Mana Tide purely because at least Thalnos has an extra use outside of the card draw. Sure, right? so and you can play it next turn. Yeah, you, you can always play the other one at a different time, so... Yeah. Not the end of the world, whichever one he goes for. But look at this. Cypher now with second-rate Bruiser in his hand. He actually has the option to just mass, uh, just mass minions on the board, drop the second-rate Bruiser, drop the Defender of Argus, and just start to actually deal damage himself, start to be the aggressor in this matchup. Yeah, he, he's got so many good options that it's almost a case of let's see how he decides to do it, how he feels about it because he's in such a good spot. What he will try and do is make sure that he's trading a lot. There's no need to win the game in any sort of hurry. Uh, that will change when these chieftains start to come into play. The, the hurry factor will increase slightly. But there's no great way for the shaman to clear other than that devolve, lightning yeah. storm, convoluted mess of things. And he may have to do that just because Sylvanas is such a huge problem here. Yeah, the scary thing about dropping your devolve now is it's likely <laughs> he's only running with one. And if he actually drops the Devolve, and then we see things like a Mountain Giant Faceless Shambler combo, or like, th I mean, there's a million combos. I mean, you're in upgrading the Bruiser. It costs three to put on the board, yeah, but it's worth true. a five drop. So you're upgrading it to a four from the three it cost in some ways. Uh, although it's got Yeti stats, so it's likely to be smaller. Certainly uh, not a fun situation. For Osher, could he even just drop a Chieftain? I really don't mind that line of play, purely to force Cypher into trying to trade, trying to get rid of some of these minions. It's going to go for the Devolve. <laughs> well, that worked. Now you've only got 12 attack to deal with. Savage Combatant as well. And this so is, this is where, two. last turn, when he kept the Blood Mage, now he gets the benefits of that, because these things all have four health. And had he not kept that back, he wouldn't have been able to make this clear. And it's a, it's a play that's put him at least yeah. not dead. I don't want to say that he's ahead at any point, because look at his board. He's got three damage that he's threatening right now. It's not a great situation. But he's got a long way through his deck now. 
He's already used both mana tide totems. He's got the Thanos on board. That's a lot of card draw that he's been using. He's uh, getting through won. the majority of his cards, and that means that all that's going to be left, really, is more Jade. Osha, I think, just hovered over the Jade Chief on the left. Now, that's interesting, because that's been there a long time, and maybe he's trying to make Cypher alert to that, because that could be a Bloodlust. I've yeah. got four useless minions, but hey, they're a threat, Cypher. Watch out for them. They're yeah. going to do you for 12. You need to clear these up now. The bluff might have just worked right there. It looked like a bluff the to me. Poken. The Kazas Poken? <laughs> the Kazakas Potion. Yeah. Drops the 5-5 five five and then drops the Sun Fury Protector just to deny any opportunity of a Bloodlust. I think it was in Cypher's mind anyway. I mean, it's an obvious thing to be scared of, but I, I feel that Oshu was just... Um, Toying with his thought. opponent. However, yeah. if he was doing it on purpose, he should have dropped the other Chieftain this turn to keep that bluff up, because it looks like it's worked. That is very true, actually. Should have held on to that. Because it makes no difference. You normally play the one on your left, but if you've represented that that's a Bloodlust, you keep representing that that's a Bloodlust. This Dirty Rat, if Twisting Nether was available, would be huge in this game right now. Removing wow. the other Chieftain, stopping the ramp, and basically emptying the hand of Osha could be massive. However, there is no Twisting Nether. There is no major wave clear available for the likes of Cypher. Yes, he's got Siphon Soul and Blast Crystal Potion, but the spot removal, he, he doesn't necessarily have enough mana to use all of it in this turn. He's going to go for the Dirty Rat anyway. And then just drop an Argus along with this Blast Crystal Potion. Yeah, he, he denies the Golem that way at least. Uh, he knew that he wasn't going to die anytime soon. And I need to use the phrase wave clear in Hearthstone more often. It's a League of Legends phrase. I understand. But it works, I guess. Yeah, I like it. It's good. I'm going to steal that occasionally. It still applies, kind of. Here we go, though. The Jades are starting to get a little bit bigger now. The 4-4 yes. coming on down. Osha actually starting to have some board presence. Yeah, the time where Cypher can take his time because he's not under that much pressure in a hurry has nearly gone. He's now got to start to try and actually get control of, or get a way to win this game as well as trying to survive. Now, he can be fairly sure there probably isn't a Bloodlust, and even if he's not, I feel that he should probably just dump the Mountain Giant. He'll be calculating safe numbers. Uh, if that card's such and such, which number would I be on? Working out whether he can tap one more time or whether he needs to start siphoning to stay alive. But I feel that you want to get that Mountain Giant down. So I feel that you want your main decision here is do I tap or don't I? And that is going to be certainly oh, an important question in this matchup. Right. With 15 damage available, if it was a Bloodlust? Yeah, it would actually go to 16, I think, wouldn't it? If he, clears, if he kills a 5-3 with his 3-1 and he kills a Totem, then there would be 5 plus 9 is 14, plus 2 for the weapon is 16. So the tap would actually be the difference between life and death in that situation. Jirax is actually coming down. He can kill another minion this way. Yeah, I feel like that's quite an overzealous play. I, huh? I personally wouldn't have minded just going for the Mountain Giant, even if you don't tap. Just to have that extra board presence. You win quickly here if you don't lose. I mean, <laughs> but, but you'll go, the losing is kind yeah. of inevitable, so... The, the option here is win quickly or don't win. So uh, this makes a lot of sense. And certainly I think one of the key things as well is right now your uh, Inferno is actually more powerful than the Jade Golems are. Right. That is not the case for very long. Right. We're about to see the Jade Claws be dropped by Osha, so he's going to get a 5-5 on the board, but Cypher's going to be dropping a 6-6 every single turn. Siphon Soul, the healing in terms of percentage of your HP is way more effective when you're Jaraxxus. I think Cypher can assume that Bloodlust isn't in hand right now since it probably would have been played in the last couple and of turns. And also, I think he probably assumes that if it is, I've lost anyway. Yeah, So true. Don't forget, he's got this Faceless Leroy. That's 12 damage. So all he has to do is get Osho out of Taunt and get him down to 12. So he's only got to force through 11 damage and keep keeping that disclaimer going and not die. Now, he can Siphon Soul and Shadow Bolt to fully clear this board. However, it means that he doesn't have any threats of his own, and I feel like that's a right. very important factor for Cypher mm -hmm. right now. If he wants to force the issue with Jaraxxus, you've got to keep spamming Inferno. Yeah, you've got to make these 6-6s. Six you've got to say, I'm going to win soon. And with that Faceless and that Leroy, soon is very, very soon. Osha is going to have to find lethal in two turns or things are going to go really, really wrong for him. Absolutely. Taunt Totem would help him. It slows everything down if he gets it. There it is. 
What Good a beauty. Play. What a beauty. It doesn't make a big difference in terms of the the countdown to the end, though, because he can use the Jaraxxus weapon to finish that mm -hmm. one off, hit into face with the 6-6, six, six, drop another one, and then he still represents lethal in the following turn. So it's not a, a huge slow, but actually the key thing to bear in mind is the fact that Osha is right. also representing lethal. And Osha's lethal. Oh, here we go with a huge taunt. Can it be set up sensibly, though? Now let's see. So obviously you can get the 6-6 six, six taunt. You can Shadow Bolt down one of the minions as well as if you want you can trade in the 6-6 six, six. so suddenly there's only the 5-3 remaining on the board you have a 6-6 six, six taunt that he can't actually break through without also using the jade claws but if he uses the jade claws then suddenly he's taking extra damage to the face obviously we know there's a lightning bolt can, in the hand of Osha. can he go face and not die is that a thing he makes a 6-6 six, six, taunt it trades into their 6-6 six, six. no so he has to kill stuff yeah he absolutely has to kill some of these minions make sure that he's not just falling apart here there's an argument to say go for the second uh, go for the faceless manipulator as well but I feel like it's just not manner efficient in this scenario specifically no I think he needs that 12 burst to have any chance of winning and he needs Osha really not to have this exact hand as well is it lethal it's not is it lethal if he rolls a spell damage it might be then doesn't get the spell damage so we'll have to trade a uh, into this one. Is it lethal? It feels like it should be lethal. Actually, no, he doesn't have to trade Aya. Can it's it lethal, just... right? He can use Jade Lightning and his face. And then oh, yeah, just... yeah, yeah. This, this is I lethal. knew it was there. I just couldn't see how to do it. And neither could Osha, strangely enough, for I a was, moment there. I wasn't even counting for lethal because you'd already said, oh, no, it's not lethal. It's <sighs> fine. Always I'm just going to completely blame you for that one. But that is going to be Osha taking this first. Honestly, with the start to that game, I didn't think Osha had a chance in that one. I thought yeah. the lack of Jades that he was getting out early, the... Yes, he found his card draw, but he didn't really find any pressure in any way. And he, it looked like Cypher's hand was just stacked with all of these threats. But in the end, Osha takes it. It's interesting. That very, very early start that Osha got, the bit before it looked like he couldn't ever win. Yeah. Cypher had to do things like play Kazakus and pick up a bit of an iffy potion and, and sort of mess around on turns four, five, six. He had to he had to Reno. He had to do things he didn't really want to do. Yeah. And then 47 million turns later, I think if I counted correctly... <laughs> Um, if you can count to 47 million, I'll be impressed. I've been counting since I was born. I'm way past 47 million. Since you were born. <laughs> most most kids learn it about three years old, <laughs> so that's actually quite impressive. Mate. But um, <laughs> Speaking of counting, let's count the amount of decks that have won a game in this series. It's just the Shaman from Osher. He's got Priest and Druid remaining. And that's going to be up against the Druid Rogue and Warlock from Cypher. All right, and this cue from Osher is interesting. I don't like talking pick order, and I almost never do it, and I shout at anyone who does it, but I think Osha's going to leave his druid till last. Because I think he wants to make sure it gets a go against the... Well, I'm wrong. This is why That's you, why you don't pick talk order, pick order, kids. Because it's going to be the druid coming on in. It's against a Miracle Rogue. We've seen Cypher play Miracle Rogue a thousand times before in the Premiership. There was a meta a while ago where just about everyone was playing the Miracle Rogue. And that meta is... The one we're watching right now, to be honest. <laughs> a while ago seeing, being 7 p.m. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Miracle Rogue currently as well. But interestingly, keeping the Azza Drake. Yeah. It's I'm just a little bit boggled, to be honest. I don't. Really I mean, you're in no hurry, and an Azza Drake does occupy the board. Druids don't kill single minions very well at all, and a 4 4. It's not priest levels of meme where oh, you just can't kill it. You can just swipe it and kill some pirates. But it's an awkward minion to kill. Um, it does also fix your draws, I guess. But by keeping it in your hand, you're more likely to have that bad draw in the first place. So it's an interesting decision. Hmm. I think it's one of these decisions that someone who's played this matchup a million times will make. In that yeah. They're like, do you know what? I agree. I've been in so many situations where when I get to turn four, I don't have that Tomb Pillager available. He knows that he's got the coin, so instead, in that scenario, when you can't just drop that turn four threat of Tomb Pillager, which often Miracle Rogue really relies on that as their only early pressure, at least he's got an Azure Drake to cycle through the deck and actually have some kind of presence. Yeah, I can go with that. Osha, deciding that this is difficult to kill. Now, given that he knows that Patch is in Cypher's hand, I'm not sure I agree with that. 
All it needs is a cold blood or an eviscerate. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, there's also a million other options Back in the hand right now. Hit, Cypher yeah. has just a great hand for this specific scenario but, with but the living But seriously, roots. though, like, even a sap would be kind of messy, uh, but he knows that Patches is there, so there's, there's a lot of things that could have happened there. Yeah, it does actually go for the living roots on this one just because it's slightly better board yeah. pressure post-turn. But the Jade Blossom... Is always going to be a nice turn three play for the Druid. And his curve is fine. Like, the hand he had now has been fixed. He's used the Innovate. Uh, Kalento dropped an Innovate for a while in this Druid deck because the Innovate, despite being one of the most busted cards in all of Hearthstone, in a lot of matchups, is kind of clunky in your hand. And I think it's in this specific iteration, because of the inclusion of uh, the... I can't remember what it's called all of a sudden. The three mana wild growth that drops a Jade Golem. No, the Jade Blossom. Jade Blossom. Um, you have so much ramp in your deck right. already that often Innovate doesn't actually find you anything extra. Often you end up using Nourish as an Innovate in, sp in specific scenarios. I will so hasten to add that was on ladder where you need, say, an extra early thing to prevent yeah. that, that other deck that we don't talk about from killing you in four turns. But <laughs> um, even so, it, it's a card that. I've definitely seen lists, though, that didn't have Innovate in it. Yeah, I think Osha just chose to use it while it was usable, fix his curve and not be greedy with it. And that's going to pay off now because he's, he's curved pretty nicely and that's going to allow him to swipe this board on curve and then he's going to play into his jades. Things are looking quite good. But things quite often look quite good as the Druid in his match and then suddenly Conceal happens. Yeah, and also... If you suddenly start to see that there's a Questing Adventure and an Edwin on the board that are both pretty hefty, <laughs> yeah. you don't have enough removal to deal with two huge Yeah, threats. you might have two mulches in your entire deck if you're greedy. You'll probably have one. You might have two. But you've got to draw them both. And there's two Questings and an Edwin and a million card draw to get them with. And look at this hand right now for Cypher. He's got Leroy as well as a Questing and Edwin. A lot of threats available at this early stage of the game. Jade Behemoth is going to come down, which certainly slows the progression. And with a Living Roots and a trade, Osha very much in control of the board. Yeah, Questing, Prep, Sap, Edwin. Well, I'm not sure what you sap. Probably just sap the 3-3s three and never ever see it again. Oh, you've got Gadget Sand to muddy the waters, which obviously goes really well with the turn before all that stuff. And the question is... You could just prep a vis actually and save the sap for when you're facing a 9 9 or something mm -hmm. later. Uh, I, I quite like the idea of getting the questing and the Edwin down here. Even if you get mulched, then they've still got to find a way to kill your 5 5 questing, which means they've got to find two more damage from somewhere. No, he's going to take a moment and go for gadgets and card draw. So, patches into Eviscerate as oh. well as a Van Cleef. It means that he gets a big minion down, but also deals with some of the threat on board. Not going to blow his load on the Gadget Sand and Questing yeah. just yet. And now he's got the, the Gadget Sand into Preparation and Sap. This is significantly better than what I was talking about. Mulch available now for Osher. This is an opportunity for that card. Obviously, Edwin, one of the biggest threats in this entire deck. And I would argue that this is a great situation for Mulch purely because you can actually see the minion you want to kill. It's very rare in this version <laughs> of the deck that you actually can target the things that are about to kill you next yeah, turn. Yeah, that's a very, very well-worded and good point. Uh, to actually have the ability to see what's going to happen. Yeah, this looks like this Mulch setup. He's just playing the Drake first for mechanical purposes, make sure there's nothing crazy comes up. And there he goes, the Mulch, like you say, whilst you can. Yeah, there's a million times when you're playing Jade Druid on ladder, you'll go against a Miracle no. Rogue and you've got all of the removal in the world in your hands. And all you can do is throw a Rage for Armor because the Questing Adventurer is concealed away. The Tiny Finn, arguably the worst card you can get out of uh, the mulch. How there. can you be so evil? I mean, it's cute, but it is pretty damn useless. It can hear you. No, it can't. Murlocs have feelings this too. This is a card game. It's a it's an image on a screen, Lorinda. I'm sorry to break this to you. That's not what they tell me at the home. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so getting this card draw out of the first gadget sand, getting into the second gadget sand. Now, one of the most important things this game is the fact that Cypher doesn't drop the tiny fin here. What can you explain the reasoning there on not dropping the tiny fin? Because it works for the questing later and 
Also, you don't want your opponent to know what your card is because it doesn't do anything. That is very true. And also, plays into swipe a little bit, but I don't think that's big <laughs> that big of a deal. But look at this board right now for Osher. He has got the Jades rampaging across this board, and the, this is the kind of situation that is very difficult to deal with. Miracle Rogue. You're great when you're on the offensive. You're amazing when you're on the offensive and very difficult to deal with. But when there's a massive wide board of lots of chunky minions, suddenly hmm. things start to look a little bit bleaker. 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 One of those is More bleak? Word. Something like that. Anyway, your point is really good. Um, he's setting up lethal, but it's not just the lethal setup now. It's the ongoing threats he's going to create. And Cypher's going to have to find... Answer after answer. I mean, he has the deck to do that with, but he's running out of time. He needs to find... I mean, he's not going to be able to ask any questions for Agent. Yeah, just throwing the tiny thing out there to buff that questing. And he's kind of running out of stuff, but he has the gadget sound for the reload. I was going to say, Osha has nothing, but Osha has picked up Nourish, which means that he can keep this pain coming. In fact, he's he doesn't actually even lethal. have to. He's got, he's got a Feral Rage, and I can't so count. No worries on that one. Cypher is going to go down. Obviously, tried to be a bit aggressive there. Should have used the Sap in that last turn just to try and deny a little bit more damage. He knew that a lot of removal had already been used by Osher in that game. Was hoping that there was none in hand, but there was. So. Yeah, not enough removal from the Rogue. I thought he could actually clear it down, so he's surviving on three or four for that. I apologize. But even so, the Nourish would have found more damage. And important. just... Cypher cleared as much as he could. He certainly did, but Osha is now 2-0 and zero in this series. Osha could be looking to start this season of the Premiership off with a bang right now. We've already seen 1-3-0 tonight from Hello Leroy. Osha, his teammate, maybe has learned a thing or two. And That's a good point, actually. This third season will be the third he's played in. He's not done very well in the last two. Maybe this could be a third time lucky. Yeah, change of format, change of luck. That's a famous phrase, I think. Is it? I think it is, is now. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Priest, the last remaining deck. Dragon Priest, while tonight it's not been that consistent, generally speaking, it's a fairly consistent deck. Like when you can just drop massive chunky minions. And when it comes to the Miracle Rogue, I've got to say I kind of favor the Dragon Priest in that one just because of the taunts that you have available and just it can't deal with such a huge board. Yeah, it can be awkward. I think I like the Rogue in there just because of the the sustained nonsense and again we said earlier about you can see the priest coming so you can push it a bit late with your gadgets and you can, you can take your Great time just a little there, bit by the way sustained nonsense that's that's what i talk <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> well, yeah. so i hear it a Area lot from my employers <laughs> um but he is going to have trouble potentially against the reno lock and possibly the rogue so he may be down to having to beat the druid with this if things work out according to percentages but we've seen a lot of Hearthstone tonight and percentages have gone out of the window for a lot of it today. That is very true. And we'll see whether that's a trend that will continue in this game. Leroy and Faceless in hand already. Well, he's well on the way to finding his combo. Perhaps a little bit early though. Yeah, this is as bad a start as you could hope for as the Warlock, but it needs to be a bad start. This matchup is very, very favored for the Warlock. And even picking up that Doomsayer Again, Priest has no real shock tactics yet. Can Shadow Word paint it? Woo. But Priest needs to be developing stuff. And if you're Shadow Word painting stuff, you're not developing stuff. Not the greatest choice. selection of dragons either. Midnight Drake is okay early on in the game. Also, Hungry Dragon, clearly very good value. And generally mm -hmm. speaking, as a Dragon Priest, you have things on the board to trade with whatever comes up. On and the he's taken side. it. And something I was going to say about Hungry Dragon is... We've all seen Maelstrom Portal enough times to know the one, a feel for the one drops now. And I feel that Hungry Dragon has gone under the radar a little bit as a card that has been slowly but surely buffed with all these 1-1s one that have been printed. Like, uh, people say what that occasionally, though, jokingly. Like, I know, it gives your opponent the one drop, so... It used to give your opponent two ones and three twos and all sorts of horrible things, but now it gives them a 1-1 one -one more often than not, so... Yeah, fair enough. A lot, of peop a lot of people joke, oh my goodness, this is a nut for a buff to X portal or whatever, when one new card is made. But I think over the last year, Hungry Dragon has curved up reasonably highly. It's definitely a, a card I love to pick in Arena. It's just whether or not it would be something that's seen often in Constructed is... Remains to be seen. Doomsayer down, though. Shadow Word Pain in hand. 
I feel like this has to be done. Yeah, Even it does. though you, it kind of sucks to use that so early on. There are a lot of cards in the Reno lock that you want to use it on. Cipher, not happy about that one. Yeah, some of those cards would have been played though. Like Imgang Boss, for instance, probably would have just come down if he had it. And you're you're quite happy to do that. Cipher, like you say, not particularly happy about this situation. He's two zero down, and Osher is curving out nicely, but. This is the problem, right? You're curving out nicely, but you can't finish your opponent off quickly enough, which means that by the time you get to Twisting Nether, by the time you get to Abyssal, etc., then your opponent tends to stabilise, and they just play Juraxes and spew 6-6 six, six minions all over you, and just bad things happen in general. This is the thing about Dragon Priest, though, is if you do curve out nicely, it's actually one of the most terrifying decks in the whole game. Right. Because the, the sheer momentum that you can build up, if he doesn't find things like Twisting Nether, which he doesn't have in his hand right now, all he has in terms of removal is going to be that Siphon Soul and the Abyssal, which, you know, they are good cards. I'm not going to try and take away from them, but they won't deal with a massive board. Yeah, using this Faceless defensively, a sign that actually Cypher feeling the pressure slightly here. Yeah, and one of the nice things about that as well is, while obviously we're still a turn away, it denies any kind of Dragonfire Potion action because it is inst it is itself a dragon. Yeah, and a secret agent, and he's coming through, as you told me earlier. Is. So he drawing the is. card here, um, I think he has to do this. In general, I'm not comfortable with just drawing cards. You need to get that stuff on the board, but the stuff he was getting on the board was only an Azure Drake or something anyway, so... I think this is fine this time. You might as well have the card anyway. I think one of the only other plays is you play the Defender of Argus to get the value trade. Sure. But in that scenario, do you really want to use Argus? You things know like Hellfire just wipe you out anyway yeah. as well. You, also, you know that things like Leroy exist, right? And that sure. is going to be a terrifying card to go up against later on in the game when you're low on HP and oh, you've got a board but no Argus taunts. Really? Argus is your number yep. one miracle savior. What can Cypher do? The answer is lots of things. That's always the answer with Reno Lock. How many of them are good? Quite a few <laughs> seem to be good. Uh, he doesn't have the board clears, though. He doesn't have the Twisting Nether or the Hellfire or or anything, really. And actually, he's just going to leave Roy now and deal with the damage while he can. Yeah, and honestly, that I feel like this is... The fact that he's used Faceless last turn and Leroy this turn really kind of says what position Cypher is in in this game. He knows that if he allows this board to just continuously build up, sure. he will just lose the game. And there he also no knows game. that he has that card in his hand that wrecks basically everything, Lord Jaraxxus, so he could afford not to worry about his combo kill, instead using it defensively just to chug along so he doesn't get too far behind. And then at some point he will clear a board, is his plan at least. Yep. And then at the point after that, he'll just heal up with Reno or with Juraxis, even if he lets himself go low again. Again, just pointing out you can go as low as you want against this deck, as long as it's not below seven. Uh, of course, six is kind of threatening because of Bran into uh, Corruptor. Yep, for and, sure. And, you know, he should be able to just win this. But... I've got to say, the Mountain Giant is actually a really big pickup for the Dragon Priest. It really because is. Because, bear in mind, Dragon Priest is this deck that is renowned for having lots of kind of... Almost mid-range threats, yeah. right? The five sixes are kind of the big, scary threat that is in every Dragon Priest deck, along with the Corruptors as well, with their direct damage, but they're not that chunky of a minion. The A8 forces out a spot removal that we saw the Cypher yeah. Soul went through, and suddenly, Osha has a lot more room to play these big, chunky dragons, and a lot less to fear taking them out. Yeah, and five extra damage is going to go face because of it as well, because whatever Cypher was going to do last turn, it wasn't involving, you know, doing nothing, and actually basically it was, that was just do nothing for a turn. Uh, Osha obviously very, very careful here. He'll want to commit more to this board. He'll be thinking, okay, I play X, I do whatever I do now, my opponent plays Twisting Nether, and then he'll be thinking about what he does in response to that to make sure that he wins on that turn. But factoring into all of that means he has to beat Reno as well. And it may be that he's just going to set up leads and say, let's make him have the Twisting Nether. And that is what he's going to do. He puts his opponent on 10 with 10 on board and says, have something. I know you probably have, but I'm going to force you to play your things inefficiently yep. until I crack you. What resources do you have? You better play them now, is what he's saying. My control tech gets the worst possible target, as it always does. Cypher's face, he's like, 
damn it. Uh, it and this happens. is still lethal if he doesn't play the taunt, which he almost certainly will, because of the Defender of Argus. Yep. Also has the Refreshment Vendor and Mistress of Mixtures in hand. So options available in terms of healing himself. Well, obviously, Mistress, uh -huh. uh, not a quick enough play to actually heal him on the spot, but with the Sun Fury Protector, could have been some kind of combo. Isn't actually go isn't going to go for any healing here. Yeah, I think he's got to build a board so that when he does heal, then the comeback play from Osher doesn't just kill him anyway. Then you can heal and have stuff on the board. Uh, but it looks risky, but I think it is the play to win. Now, there's seven damage available if we assume that Argus is used this turn to just go straight to face. There's no Corruptor, though, to actually finish that turn off. Yeah, and you've got to assume your opponent has Reno at this point as well. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're far enough through your deck that your opponent's playing this sort of weird game as well where he's like, I'm on 10, I'm not scared. And this is the problem that Priest has. I've been on about it all night. You know, he's on 10, but he knows what's happening. There's no terrifying Leroy just going to kill you. And these, this, as a Dragon Priest, when you're playing on ladder against a Reno Lock, these are the most important turns in the game. This, these next, like, three or four <laughs> turns are going to be the formative turns in this game. How much does he commit to the board, and how much does Cypher have to use to deal with that? And because that is going to be the decision on who actually takes this one. Yeah, and Cypher here doesn't actually have much. Like, he doesn't have Twisting Nether, he doesn't have Reno Jackson, he doesn't have Kazakas. Usually you sit there as the opponent and say, well, he's got to have at least two of those. So he hasn't got any of them. And well, now we're going to have to see. This might just be a forced Jaraxxus turn. 5 HP remaining is not a fun situation. No Reno to boot. I mean, there's always the play of just gamble the life tap and pray for Reno, but it's definitely not a safe play. And the tournament is on, well, the tournament, week one, it is a Swiss. It's not on the line for the whole tournament, but week one is on the line for Cypher here, and you don't say it. You know, you do not want to be 0 and 1. No, you know, Swiss not. tournament, you've got to win more than you lose because. At some point, you're going to have to have a 2-0 streak to overcome that. Well, he's going to be able to trade things through and use that heal effectively mm -hmm. to keep himself topped up. But there is seven damage represented on board already for Osha. Just 15 to do. He's just There's found a Corruptor more. as well. This is looking real scary for Cypher. Damage just going to go straight on into face. I think... Um, might be a slight misordering personally, but I think just playing as a Drake and just pick up something else. Try and pick up Bran, for instance, because then your corrupt is worth an extra three damage. And you've got to be aware that your opponent's probably got taunts, he's probably got heals. He hasn't got any of that, but you, know, you don't know that. And I like this Twilight Guardian as well, because it denies any trading from future Infernals. It also denies the weapon trading. He can't afford to take that three damage. Right, and yet again, lethal on the board, and this time it's only the Faceless that's really going to be the saver, or the Sun Fury Protector. And the really scary thing is oh. the way you clear the board is Bran and Abyssal, right? But that leaves you on 2 HP. Yeah, you can't do that. What you can do is you can roll um, an Inferno, play Sylvanas, and taunt them both. That looks quite strong at this point. Might just buy you that bit of time you need to get to your Kazakas and to start making 6-6s. Six that is going to be the play that he makes here. Just putting up a bit of a wall. What he doesn't know, though, is two Shadow Word Deaths are in the hand of Osher. And this roll on Sylvanas may just be the difference maker in this series. Can he guarantee it? Can he guarantee it? Um, no, yeah, he has eight, regardless. Even if it steals the Corruptor, with the five on the board on top of the... Uh, the Blackwing Corruptor's what if it steals damage the taunt, to face. Though, if it steals the Taunt, you can't get through Oh, that's true. That is true. Uh, can that's you the just only scenario where he loses, or where he can't finish it. There is also just Jam Ragnaros, which I'm sure chat <laughs> wants him to do. <laughs> you can always just Jam Ragnaros, but I definitely feel like Shadow of Death is a uh, more consistent play. This is basically a one and three of... Oh, wait, no, you can't corrupt her with the second Shadow of Death. What am I talking about? Doesn't have the mana, and the taunt is stolen anyway. Corruptor still in hand. Dragonfire Potion can't deal with this 3-6. This is now a very uncomfortable position for Russia. Yeah. He's almost underdog here in some situations. He has got another Shadow Word Death. I think that maybe he should corrupt the 2-3, which gives him the maximum Ragnaros chance next turn. And we see once again Cypher playing that Cypher style of 
every single time he thinks his opponent slipped up a little bit, just pop a little emote in there. Try and put your opponent on edge. Try and tilt them just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think I'd have to squelch Cypher immediately if I played him. I mean, that's one of the things Leroy always said, is the Cypher is his absolute kryptonite because he can't deal with the emote spam. He can't deal with the, the tilt that he forces. Twilight Drake in hand, along with the face of Shambler, could put up a pretty significant wall. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty hard to get through. It's also not that hard, not, but it's not hard dragon enough. fireable, importantly. Yeah, this is going to be four minions. It's going to be a one in four chance because he'll be able to trade into the. He'll be able to trade into the, the three six. So there'll be three minions on board. So I think you just make the Ragnaros play. And I like the decision to go with the Twilight Drake, not the Infernal, because in Shadow of Death cannot target this taunt. Dragonfire is the only way that any of this board is dealt with, aside from just dropping Ragnaros and hoping to hit face. I think that might be what you're down to here. You can trade into the 3-4, so there's a 1 in 4 chance. It will kill one of the things. I think the the, the really scary thing about dropping Rag right now is... Oh my goodness, what what is with the cats on stream tonight? We are, we've rolled high. This is like the lottery. It looks like a goat. Streams. It is definitely not a goat. <laughs> um, here we go, the trade comes on through... And Ragnaros with the one in four of winning this game. The scary thing is with Inferno as a hero power, this is kind of the best odds you're ever going to get with Ragnaros. Let's see. And it does it face. Osha's done it. He takes the game wow. against Cypher 3-0 for the second time tonight on a Ragnaros high roll. Who would have called Osha winning that? Anyway, I mean, uh, to be fair, Osha has always been such an unlucky player in the Premiership. Like, I'm actually over the moon that he's people. actually rolled well. Yeah, he's done well there, and Cypher up against it from the week one. He's going to have to really get himself into gear to get through to this top eight knockout after five weeks. It's been an incredible night's Hearthstone. I'm really yeah. excited by it. I've been looking forward to this, and it is a bit of a meme. I'm looking forward to it. I have been looking forward to this, and I've not been disappointed. We've had some upsets. We've had some good results for favourites. I managed to get three out of four predictions wrong, so that's always good. Well done. That's one more than I expected to get right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, crazy results. Definitely not what we were expecting coming in. And it shows that these newly qualified players definitely have a lot to prove themselves. And our veterans may just have a little bit more work cut out than they were expecting. Right, and it's Swiss. So all of these veterans losing means that next week... We have some very interesting matchups. Yes, yeah, some, someone's going to go 0-2. Someone yeah. who shouldn't be 0-2 is going to go 0-2. There will be at least one matchup where we just go, whoa. There's a world in which we have Jambray versus Ball Control in Week 2, which was our grand final last season. Like, that, that is the kind of scenario we're in with this Swiss. And they can only afford two more losses until they cannot qualify for that double elimination. But speaking of how the players are doing, let's take a look at our standings at the end of Week 1. Up at the top of the scoreboard, we have only six players so far. Right. We've still got a game that hasn't actually been played just yet. Hello, Leroy. Duncan from Meltdown. Dan SWF. Ben and It's Pie Man. I, I read it as Spy. I was like really confused then. It's Pie Man who we saw earlier. It's Pie Man and coming Osher. through. They're the ones that have managed to win their games. And you've got Cypher and Jambre. Obviously, we saw them lose out their matches on the stream. And you've got Ball Control, Mysterious, Falcone, and Ting Ting all lost their matches. And then the remaining games, I believe, have been rescheduled for another night. Yeah, I think that is the case with one of the players being in the Bahamas and another having yes. a, a thing that just could not be cancelled. And his opponent said, I don't want the death win, I want to play. Yeah, which is perfectly <laughs> Shout out to Helix yeah. Fossil there, you know, wants to play. He wants to actually prove that he deserves right. his place in the Premiership. And so respectable. that was important. Um, but yeah, it's just been an incredible week. And week two is going to be crazy we're going to have some 01 guys who are going to play against people you wouldn't expect and also somebody's going to go 2-0 who may be a surprise because of the nature of how yes. many 1-0s there are and in this kind of bracket that is a scary place to be we'll find out how that one's going to go down next week though at 7 p.m uk time tune in next monday for the second I keep on saying episode. It's not really an episode. The second show of this season, the second leg of the Swiss. But from Lorinda and myself, we're going to be saying good night and from production as well. And we'll see you guys next Monday.